Sky, just over a week has gone by since your last fight. Our thoughts are still with Sabrina Perez and her family. I guess still for you, still a very difficult situation to, to comprehend. Yeah, just a, a little bit of an awkward one, I guess. It's, it's, um, it's, not, it's not been the way you'd think you'd be celebrating. Um, uh, I guess a career best performance. Um, but yeah, it, I mean, it's life. It's a, it's a really hard one, but yeah, not one that's sat very well with me um, and definitely not, yeah, one I've, I've celebrated the way I would normally when I win. Just a really sad situation how it unfolded in the final round of your fight. Neither of you knew what was going on. No. Um, and I know you've been in touch with her since to, to, to talk to her if you just want to. Yeah, I reached out to her, of course, um, while I was still in Tijuana. Um, I just, I honestly, I couldn't get her out of my head. Um, I couldn't imagine what she was going through and the pain that she, that she would have been feeling. And I, I, I just wanted to know that my thoughts were with her. I was thinking of her and praying for her. Um, yeah, and we've, we've sent a couple of messages back and forth since. Um, she's obviously going through a very, very tough time. Um, she mentioned him being her life partner. They've been together since she was 17 or 18. Um, so yeah, just losing in boxing is um, hard enough, but to, to lose your belt and then have your whole world be turned upside down um, all in a matter of moments. Like, it's just, it's very hard to comprehend or even understand what she actually is going through right now. But yeah, uh, a tough one. You've, you've not really celebrated, as you said, becoming mm. WBC interim world featherweight champion. But if you think about the performance itself, you must have been really pleased with, with what you showed in the ring. I was, um, I was, I was really happy with my performance. Um, I got to show glimpses of what we have been working on, um, the changes and I guess adaptations we've made to my style were, were evident. You could see that um, the work's definitely gone in. I was very fit, I was uh, stronger. So no, I was, I was very happy with my performance um, and I feel like it was another really good building and growing fight um, towards becoming a more finished, polished boxer. So uh, no, I'm, I am happy with my performance. I'm very sad about the circumstances that followed, but um, yeah, I think I'm, I'm moving in the right direction and, and that was the main thing. I wanted to show even just glimpses of, of what I've been doing in the gym and I, I feel like I did that. How difficult is it when you've been used to one style your whole career? It's, it's not necessarily a flick of the switch and I think people maybe underestimate how, how difficult that can be. Yeah, I think because a lot of people probably spend a lot of time changing and adapting their style when they first turn over. Um, whereas I kind of just jumped straight in. Uh, I literally have, I was an amateur boxer for 16 years and literally spent six weeks in a professional gym and, 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 and debuted. So um, for me, it was just, I was just doing what I already knew. I wasn't, I wasn't adding bits and, and changing bits and um, adapting my style. Uh, and that's been a really slow work in progress over the past year and a half. But again, um, I'm moving very quickly, obviously. Um, three title fights in my first eight fights uh, and obviously looking at those world titles in the next couple of fights. So um, yeah, I think a lot of people are just expecting to see a completely different change boxer in two or three fights. And, it, and be when it didn't happen, um, I was obviously starting to feel a bit of pressure. And, um, so it was nice to, to actually show um, those changes are there and they're coming. And um, I think with every fight, we'll see more and more uh, of, of the finished product, which is exciting. No performance is obviously perfect. I know I was watching your corner and that they were willing you to, to push forward even yeah. more than you were. Um, do you think if you were able to do that or if you did do that, you might have forced a stoppage? Because at times it did look like that was really close. Yeah, I think it was close. I think um, she, she was definitely looking to counter with that big swinging overhand right. So I was being uh, cautious. A little bit like Sonny said in the press conference the other day, I'm not going to get involved and put myself in a in a dangerous position if I don't have to. If I'm winning every round, I'm not going to go and um, take unnecessary risks. So um, that kind of resonated with me a little bit. Uh, I thought like, oh, especially towards the end of the fight, um, they were kind of willing me on to, to stop her in the 10th. But it's like, you've won every round, you've, you've got two it. minutes. And she's obviously only looking for that one lucky shot um, because that's all she can do. So. Um, yeah, calculated, but uh, I think I was, I definitely showed a lot more spite and aggression 
And I think those moments will come and those, those openings and opportunities will present themselves at the right time. And um, I wasn't disappointed that I didn't get the stoppage. I was really happy with my performance. Um, and I think those stoppages will come. Talking of your corner, there was a new member in there, Bradley Skeet. Talk to us about how that came around and, and what he's brought to, brought to the corner. Yeah, Brad's great. He's, uh, it's been such a good um, addition to the team. Uh, Ed obviously cornered Brad for about 30 of his pro fights, so um, we have a really close-knit team. Uh, there's obviously great trust and bond between Ed and Brad, and it just works really well. Um, Brad, I couldn't fault anything in Fault Week. He was just so helpful, um, there for me for anything I needed. And you could just tell, like, he's, he's been there. He's been in that position. He knows exactly what you're going through when you're making weight and everything else. So, no, he was, he was really, really good. He's got such a good boxing brain. Um, and I feel like we share a lot of the same um, ideas and, and, like, boxing IQ. So, no, it's been, it's been great. I love working with him, and I'm really excited for the future for the team. I think another notable improvement that I saw was, was your conditioning. I remember when... I was in New York when you fought Tanya Alvarez and at the yeah. end of the 10 rounds, it did look difficult. Um, mm. So I guess shout out to Alex for, for those Definitely, improvements. Definitely, yeah. So um, what sort of a mental tick is that to be able to do those 10 rounds really comfortably? Oh, honestly, um, again, another great addition to my team working with Alex this camp. Um, I was by far in my best physical condition I've been in um, as a professional. Um, I think for me, like, I don't know if you noticed, but I stood in between um, every round which I kind of have always wanted to do, but my team were kind of a bit like, no, because it'll look bad if you get halfway through the fight and then want to sit, um, blah, 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 blah. Which <laughs> in the Tanya Alvarez fight, believe me, I wanted to be sitting. <laughs> um, but I think even my team saw the conditioning um, and the shape I was in going into that fight and they allowed me to stand um, for the whole 10 rounds, which I was really, really happy about. Um, because it showed that they had the confidence in my conditioning as well. They knew I was going to um, blitz that 10 rounds, and I did, just like I did through um, the whole camp in sparring. I was going on long, long runs. I did um, 15K runs, 10K runs every week, um, as well as a lot of uh, interval uh, conditioning training on top of the strength stuff I was doing with Alex. So, no, I had a really, really good camp in the boxing gym and in the conditioning and the strength stuff. So, uh, yeah, I couldn't have, I couldn't have faulted the, the past 10 weeks. It was very good work going into that fight. Well, when you do eventually get on to challenging for the full world title, now you know that you can go the full 10 rounds without any problems. That mm -hmm. must give you just even more confidence. Yeah, definitely. And I think um, banking that those rounds in that fight again um, will give me more confidence to have an even higher output in the next fight as well. Because I think I threw more punches in that fight than probably my other seven fights put together. So um, I guess just knowing and, and having that in the back of my mind that I blitzed that I could have done another 10 rounds um, we'll see an even higher work rate in my next fight, which is exciting. Amanda Serrano is the full champion. She was actually watching your fight um, while it was happening. She's actually fighting here in Orlando in the same hotel we're sat in today. Mm -hmm. Interestingly, though, the WBC aren't sanctioning her, yeah. her the belt for her fight because of 12-3s. I mm -hmm. don't know if, that will, if she'll continue to do that, but that could yeah. be quite interesting for what happens with that belt. Yeah, I am interested to see what happens um, after this fight if she will defend the WBC belt over the 10 two minute rounds um, or if she vacates it'll be interesting to see what she decides to do um, for me like obviously the dream fight for me is Serrano and any other featherweight any other featherweight that's coming through and wants to be a world champion you want to fight the best and and she's the best so um, I really hope that that fight can happen um, but at the same time my dream is to be world champion and if she doesn't want to fight under the WBC's rules and sanctioning, um, then I want to fight whoever's the next best uh, for that world title. So um, it will be interesting to see what happens. I hope it's the Serrano fight, uh, but we'll see. I think because you've been very vocal in wanting the Amanda Serrano fight, people may get that twisted with you disrespecting her, but it's, it, yeah. it's full respect to her because you want to challenge the best to be the 100%. best. 100%. Um, I, I hope it's never been taken. Um, as disrespect. Uh, I, I value so much what she has done for, for women's boxing. Um, she's, she's one of the trailblazers, a pioneer of women's boxing. She always has been. I've always said that. Um, but I, I want to prove that I'm the best um, and I believe I can beat her. 
that's no way, in no way disrespect. Um, I have so much respect for her and I, I just want to show the world what I'm capable of. When you think about yourself in the ring with Amanda Serrano, what is it that gives you so much confidence that you, you will not only be able to go toe to toe with her, but also come out victorious? I believe my style is wrong for Amanda Serrano. I think she's, she's very aggressive. She's got very high punch output, but she doesn't have my precision. She doesn't have my timing. Um, I move a lot. I'm coming from all different angles. Um, I can punch on the back foot and now I'm starting to punch on the front foot as well. So for someone that's always coming, um, I think it'll be very interesting to see what she does against someone who's hitting her every time she comes in. Before, before we let you go, we're, we're here in Orlando, your stable mate Sandy Ryan's here. She has an immense challenge and opportunity ahead of her against Jessica, Jessica McCaskill. To, do, to be able to unify so quickly in a career, what an opportunity that is. It's amazing. I'm so excited for Sandy. This fight is so good for women's boxing. Again, it's one of the pioneers and one of the young hungry lions coming through. Um, I've seen the shift in Sandy, in her mindset, in her training, in her physical, mental uh, approach to, to professional boxing since that defeat against Farris so early in her career. Um, she is a different beast and I'm so excited for her tonight. I think she's definitely going to do the business and we're going to start seeing that new era coming through. What do you think that Sandy's because Sandy obviously had a, a setback early on in her career, mm -hmm. but she's bounced back and to be in this position so quickly shows that she's not only so dedicated to the sport, but she, there's something special about her. She is, she's very special. She, she loves to fight, but she can box as well. And I think that's what makes her so special because she's in exciting fights. She comes to fight, she comes to win, um, but she's got a really good box IQ as well. She's uh, a great size for the weight as well. I think um, you could even see in the face to face, just the size of her, she's really filled into uh, the 147 division as well, so I'm very excited for her. Sky, the new WBC interim world featherweight champion. Exciting times ahead. We look forward to seeing you out soon. Thank you.